imagine you want to buy an electric vehicle and it, it, imagine the process you might go through is you know might have some kind of cars that you're interested in and you might go you know kind of looking around doing some research looking at you know what price they are what the reliability is what the mile per gallon um, uh, effective mile per gallon is and you might just kind of get, take a test drive and then you just kind of get a feel for what car you like the best and go ahead and buy it and that'd be pretty standard um, there's a little bit more rigorous way to do it though and um, you might want to use this if you really want to make sure you're getting the best car based on your priorities or perhaps you're maybe you you have a decision that you're offering up to your boss and instead of just saying hey boss I think we should get this one you want to give him like a more rigorous like a well substantiated kind of a method of how you, why you're you're choosing one over another option and in that case a decision matrix might help you out. So let's use one of those. So let's say you're doing some shop around. Your first thing you look at is a Kia Nero, full electric. And then maybe you take a look at a Volkswagen ID4, which I believe Elon Musk is a little critical of. But speaking of which, let's say you want, also want to look at a Tesla. And if we're going to check out the price on them, let's go ahead and make a little column here for price. And it turns out that Kia Nero is going to come in at, say, 39500 That Volkswagen ID4 is at 41230 And that Tesla Model Y is at 46990 And it'd be a pretty simple um, process if all you're interested in was the price. Um, you could say right off the bat, well, the Kia Nero is the lowest price, so let's go with that. Um, there's um, a way to kind of, kind of show that in a, um, um, based on a normalized score, which doesn't really, you wouldn't really need it if that was your only consideration, but um, it's going to help us later. So let's go ahead and, and make change this into a score. For this case, of course, the lower is better. So let's just kind of clarify that up front. So if smaller or lower is better, then our normalized score is going to be equal to our, the best value of all the values that are available divided by the actual value of whatever the particular product is. So specifically in this case, say we're checking out this um, Kia Nero. So, so my norm score for my Kia is equal to the best value of all three of these, which turns out to be the Kia value divided by the actual value of the Kia, 39,500, which is equal to 1. So I'm getting a norm score of 1. Let's just make a little norm column here. So I've normalized this basically so that norm is, um, the, um, 1 is the best. So it's normalized to 1 is the best and, and lower is, is not as good. Okay, and if we, look, if we look at that norm score for our Volkswagen, that's going to be the best value here, which is still 39,500, and it's divided by this actual value of our Volkswagen, which is 41 to 30, and it turns out this is going to be 0.96. So we can go ahead and put that down here. And lastly, if we're going to look at our Tesla model, that's that same value for best value, and it's going to be divided by 46,990. And that is going to give us a score of 0.84. Okay, so initially, you know, lower is better. We just converted that to a normalized score where where the closer you get to one, the better. And, you know, in this case, obviously the Kia Nero is the, has the highest normalized score. Um, but let's say we're also interested in efficiency. So let's throw up here the um, effective miles per gallon. So it turns out the um, effective miles per gallon for the Nero is 112. For the Volkswagen, it's 93. And for our Tesla, it's 130. Okay, so um, again, you could probably just kind of look at this straight up and think, well, if miles per gallon equivalent is all I really care about, then the Tesla is going to be the best one. And it is, but again, it's going to help to change this into a normalized score. So let's go ahead and write that up here. So in this case, bigger is better because we want more miles per gallon, where it's not really per gallon, obviously, because it's an electric car. So it's, that's why the equivalence here, because it's it's just a um, kind of a measure of its efficiency. So in this case, we're saying if bigger is better. And if bigger is better, our norm score is going to follow a similar pattern here. It's just going to be the reciprocal of it. So it's going to be the actual value divided by the best value. And let's go ahead and box that in. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this to our Kia. In this case, um, again, we're looking at 
uh, miles per gallon equivalent. So let's just go ahead and write that out here for clarity. And we'll start off with our Kia. So our Kia norm score is equal to our actual value, which is 112, divided by our best value, which in this case is the Tesla with 130. And that's going to equal a score of 0.86. And let's go ahead and look at the uh, Volkswagen. And its value is 93. So let's go ahead and divide that by 130, in which case you get 0.72. And lastly, we've got the Tesla. And that's value is 130 over 130, which is just going to be 1. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in over here. And again, this was our normalized score, so let's just go ahead and make that column norm. So we can see that you know Tesla wins out on the miles per gallon, but Kia wins out on the on the price. But there are probably a couple more factors worth considering. Um, particularly, like think about range. That's a pretty big factor, right, for an electric vehicle. And then you may have reliability. That might be a concern. And maybe uh, owner satisfaction. That's a, a metric that Consumer Reports gives. Just the overall owner satisfaction might be good to consider. And. Let me just go ahead and throw some values up here. Okay, so if we look at the range, you can see that um, the, the key in the Volkswagen are 240, where the Tesla's at 310, so a, um, a bit better range, if that's something important. Um, Reliability-wise, um, surprisingly, that key is up at 5, and the Volkswagen's at 2, and Tesla's at 3. So. The key is definitely better reliability wise, at least according to the consumer reports where I'm getting all this. And, but satisfaction, um, it's a little bit lower at four, where um, the other ones are at five. And of course, this is all on like a five, five point scale, so five is the best. So um, imagine if we wanted to get a um, normalized score for each of these. Do you imagine we'd use um, this equation or this one? So um, if you chose this one, you're right, because in this case, bigger is better. We want a bigger range, we want a higher score and reliability and satisfaction. So we go ahead and just plug in the same scoring system we did up here. So let me go ahead and plug those numbers in that we, that we get for that. Okay, so there's, we filled in all of our norm scores. Let me go ahead and write those columns up here just to be clear. And what we could do next is just look at the total if we just add all these up. So if we add all these up, we get a total of 4.44 for the Kia, a total of 3.85 for the Volkswagen, and a total of 4.44 exactly for our Tesla. Um, so these are actually scoring the, the same if you add all these up. And so this wasn't necessarily going to help us to differentiate between the, the Kia and the, and the Tesla. Um, but of course, this is just considering that all of these are were similarly weighted, or we care about each one of these um, the same amount. And that may or may not be true. Um, in this case, let's say I might actually care more about miles per gallon because I, maybe I just want to be super efficient. I want a warm, fuzzy feeling that I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm being environmentally friendly as possible and um, I really care about miles per gallon and let's say reliability I know that consumer reports give me this I don't really believe it because they're kind of new cars and I really trust you know I don't think that you know Tesla's that bad maybe or I just you know for every I don't trust this so maybe maybe I don't really I don't really trust this reliability metric so I'm gonna get rid of that but I want to give this more weight over here. But all these other ones, I want to still give them a pretty decent amount of weight. So let's say I've got five, I've got five different um, factors here. Say I want them to all total up to one. So I'm just going to go ahead and give reliability a zero. So I'm just actually just going to get rid of this one. For these other three, I want them to be somewhat e evenly weighted. And let's say one divided by five is 0.2. So I'm just going to give these ones uh, 0.2 weight, um, 0.2 weight. Uh, 0.2 weight, sort of what even, and what I took away from reliability, I'm going to put to miles per gallon, so I'm going to make that 0.4. So if I added up all these, um, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0.2, I'm going to get a total of one. And now that I've got my weighting down, I can go ahead and find these weighted scores. Which let me just go ahead and draw out these columns that we're going to fill in. 
And it's actually a pretty simple process to, um, to do this. So let's just go down here and just write out the formula for it. So my weighted score is just going to be equal to the weight of a given metric times the normalized score of that metric. So let's say again, I'm going to go ahead and look at price first. So looking at this weighted score for my IKEA first, I'm going to say um, this uh, weighted score IKEA is equal to this weight that I'm assigning, which is uh, 0.2 times my norm score in this case, which was 1. So that's just going to be 0.2. And for the weighted score for the Volkswagen, got the same weight as 0.2, um, but my score in this case was 0.96, so my weighted score is going to be 0.19. And finally, if we look at the Tesla, it's going to have the same weight of 0.2, but it's going to have a 0.84 score there. That's going to be 0.17. So I can go ahead and fill these in. And let's go ahead and block this in because it's an important formula to know. And basically using just the same formula, I can find out what my weighted scores are for, um, for all these other ones. So let me go ahead and fill those in. Okay, so now we've got all these weighted scores, and as you might imagine, all we need to do is go ahead and, and add those scores up. So let's go ahead and put a weighted column over here where we can add all these up. All right, so for my Kia weighted score, I'm going to go ahead and add up this, plus this, plus this, plus this, and that's going to give me 0.86 score. And for my Volkswagen, let's go ahead and add up this, and this, and this and this, and that's going to give me 0.83, so Volkswagen isn't the one. Um, and finally, let's go ahead and look at our Tesla. So add up this 0.17 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2, and that's going to give me 0.97, which um, Elon Musk, I'm sure, would approve of. So now going, you see going back through and actually like itemizing out what your real priorities are weight, weight and weighting them, you can see that maybe the Tesla is in fact the right one for you. Or maybe you just wanted to buy it anyway because you think it's cool and you want to show it off to your friends and the, you know the Kia maybe you don't think that's quite as, quite as cool. So you could just circumvent this whole process and just, and just buy it initially. But if you really wanted to justify it to people and to yourself, you could have created this and you could say, well, I think my per gallon is really important and you know therefore I'm justifying in, um, in, in buying the Tesla. Um, but at least if you did that, at least you went through this process, you could, you could justify it to, um, to someone, right? So um, hopefully this was helpful. This is a decision matrix process for buying an electric vehicle. And until next time, take care. <laughs>